Now it's time for Open Journal's Community Spotlight here on KPFT Houston. Welcome to KPFT's Open Journal. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Marlo Blue. And today we'll be taking a bite out of some of the new surgical advancements in teeth replacement. We'll be talking with Dr. Ralph Hanna, clinical associate professor at the University of Texas School of Dentistry at Houston, Department of Periodontology, and a practicing physician at Dentique Dentistry in Houston, Texas. And last but not least, we'll be taking your calls at 713 713- Five two six five seven three eight. So stay with us for the next twenty five minutes. Welcome, Doctor Hanna. Hi, how are you? Now, tell me, what training do you have that permits you to perform dental implant surgeries? Well, first you um, go to dental school, you become a dentist, and then you specialize in periodontics, which is my specialty. Uh, periodontist treats gum disease and diseases of the bone and the jaw. Then after that, I became a board certified specialist, which is given by the American Board of Periodontology, also an uh, associate professor at the University of Texas. So you're busy all the time. Yep. <laughs> if not with patients, then with students. That's always mm-hmm. uh, got to be a little more interesting. Um, how about giving us a brief history of replacement teeth for the human mouth? I mean, it's really, you know, we always hear about George Washington and the wooden teeth. It, it's yep. come a long way. Actually, it's a lot older than that. It's in um, ancient uh, Egyptians and Mayan civilization. We found some mummies that had sort of wooden implants inserted into the jaw. And that was about 3,500 years BC. And then, but in the modern history or implants as we know it today started in 1965 or around by a professor named Brennamark who actually accidentally Uh, discovered implants. He was doing research on rabbits and blood flow and he was putting the tissue samples into titanium boxes inserted into the bone and then he found that the titanium fused to the bone and that's how he looked at it and said well maybe we can use those titanium boxes or titanium into uh, actually hip implants, knees, elbows, and then teeth. And he actually started with the teeth because he felt that was the most needed. How does aging affect your teeth? Well, aging per se does not affect your teeth. It's just the length of time you have had the effects of a disease that's going on to accumulate without having to follow up and um, the treatment and uh, prevention of disease. So we're not all doomed to lose our teeth. We're (laughs) supposed to, or we can, with regular maintenance and care, prevent disease and preserve our teeth. Are we really worried about our teeth or are we specifically worried about the care of our gums? Well, you have uh, two or three major diseases that can affect your mouth. Mm -hmm. One is periodontal disease, which I'm biased. I'm starting with periodontal disease, (laughs) uh, which is the diseases of the gum and the bone around the teeth. But the other major reason or cause of tooth loss is, of course, dental uh, caries or decay. Mm -hmm. And then the third category of diseases is cancer and oral cancer, which is a a very small fraction, of course, but it's a major event. So early in life or childhood and young adults, you worry more about decay and caries. And then as you grow or become an adult and then beyond, it's periodontal disease that's mostly can affect your mouth. Is there any specific age group that uh, has more trouble with gum disease? Well, gum disease, if you go further into it, you'll find it's more classified into aggressive Mm -hmm. disease, which affects younger adults and sometimes even children, which is very unusual, but it can happen. And then uh, there is the other type of predominant periodontal disease, which is general or uh, chronic periodontitis, which is just uh, that affects the major population age 40 and above. Mm -hmm. Well, if left unchecked, what are the consequences of having poor dental health? In addition to the common, of course, effect, which is the loss of teeth and the resulting also abscesses and infection and or loss of alveolar bone or jaw bone, the link that we've been focusing on in research 
uh, in the last 10 or 15 years is the relation between the bacteria in gum disease and the bacteria in your systemic health. For example, they found relation between increased risks of stroke and heart attacks and uh, preterm uh, low birth in um, pregnant women, lung disease or um, especially pneumonia in patients with periodontal disease. Uh, all those links are being discovered and are being studied to show if there is an increased risk and in most studies that showed increased risk of those patients that have gum disease to those diseases. Mm. Also, the other big factor is also diabetics, which is a more common disease. Not only diabetics get as a complication or a not well publicized relation between diabetics is their loss of bone and loss of uh, or periodontal disease. But the interesting fact is that also when they have periodontal disease and it's uncontrolled, it's harder for them to control their blood sugar. So it's a two-way effect. So... Um Tell me, you know, let's talk a little bit about the surgery and, and specifically dental surgery. What makes a good candidate for dental surgery? You don't have, you know, a, a lot of limitation on who can be a candidate. Uh, any person who needs a, a tooth extracted or a tooth replaced with an implant have to have the general guidelines of being healthy, free of uh, uncontrolled systemic disease. So, even if you're a diabetic, if you're well controlled, then you're a good candidate for surgery. If you're hypertensive, but you're on medication and you're well controlled, then you're a good candidate for the procedure. So the only limitation will be an uncontrolled or not fit for any procedure otherwise, mm -hmm. an uncontrolled systemic condition, of course. Tell me something, uh, will implants slow or prevent further oral disease? I mean, is this really a, a save-all or...? In general, yes, um, it will re reduce the rate of bone loss or prevent bone loss if you are in good health. And of course, to back up a little bit, you know, having implants is not the end of the world. Do you? It just gives you a fresh start. You replace the teeth, but then you have to start going for checkups and maintenance uh, every six months, every right. twelve months, and that will yes, um, they will be kept in good health. A little more motivation, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, uh, regular oral hygiene, of course, is, is important. Well, Dr. Hannah, take us through the process that a patient goes through from evaluation to the final insertion of the newly implanted teeth. We do typically a an exam. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first visit is an examination and that includes um, digital x-rays, a CT cone beam or a CT scan of the jaw. Uh, three-dimensional examination and then a records or impressions are taken for uh, evaluation the bite and the occlusion and you know the availability of space followed by a discussion of the treatment or coming up with a treatment plan presenting it to the patient and then following that the next appointment will be a surgical or the procedure itself where the actual implant is placed now Depending on the type of implant we use, we have now newer implants that will integrate or fuse to the bone in less than six weeks. The regular or the other implants are take up to 12 weeks. Well, if you go a little bit further back, they used to take six months. So now we are ever and ever getting to faster integration and faster uh, healing. Now... In some cases, or in most cases, we can connect a tooth to the implant the same day of the procedure. And this is a temporary tooth first. But then after the healing period, which I discussed is anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks, a final restoration is placed that requires one or two more visits. And then the process is done. So in, in start to finish, it can be anywhere from 8 to 12, 14 weeks. It's fascinating. And and once the process is finished and they're all in, how long do the implants last? I get this question a lot, and there isn't really 
a lifespan for an implant. So an implant is supposed to last in your jaw integrated part of your body. Now, it can get affected by infections and inflammation that might affect any of your other teeth. And that's why we go back to, again, maintenance, regular checkups, good oral hygiene at home is, of course, required. And tell us, um, where are these procedures performed? Who, uh, who would you go to to have this done? Well, um, you can pick, you know, any office or you go and get, you need two, most of the time, two doctors to work on you. One will be a restorative doctor that specializes in making the teeth part of the a process and a surgeon or periodontist in my case. So you can go and get this done at your in in the office. At Dentique, for example, we all are in the same office, so you don't have to go from an office to the next to get the teeth and the process done. So you can go in one place and get your procedure and teeth done in the same day. This is also can be done under any form of sedation that you request. So you can do oral sedation or you can do uh, IV sedation or you can do just local anesthetic. It's just patient preference. Pain tolerance? Uh, well, actually, it's it's not a very painful procedure. It's, it's just anxiety and it just takes the edge off a little bit to be having some oral sedation or in, in some cases, IV sedation for longer cases. And how much is an evaluation? We we don't really talk much about cost on open journals, but, mm. but how? Let's say your regular dentist has uh, gone ahead and referred you to a surgeon such as yourself at Dentique. Well, at Dentique, we have came to the conclusion that we do the offer the consultation and the evaluation and the CT scan at no charge, but. Those services will cost anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred if you want to really get them uh, get done. Serious. Yeah, we've been talking with Dr. Ralph Hanna, and we will be right back with more after this. Don't go away.